বরঠাকুর আই এস একাডেমি প্রস্তুতি আর অধ্যয়নের নির্ভরযোগ্য ঠিকনা Hello everyone, uh, this is Fani. Welcome to Bors Hakura IAS Academy. This is our daily Hindu analysis class for 3rd September 2021. Let us begin with the first article today. CGI flags communal content in media. So the Chief Justice of India pointed out that the problem is everything in this country is shown with communal angle by a section of media. The country is going to get a bad name ultimately. So what is he talking about here? What is the rest honorable Chief Justice of India talking about? So recently there has been a spate of incidences where either TV shows, movies or news reporting has been given a communal color. So is that a good thing uh, that happens? The answer is no. Right. You have certain sections of media in our country. You have OTT platforms, you have social media platforms that tend to... Um, give a space for these kinds of activities to nurture right grow not nurture but grow they give a space for these uh, sections or these people who want to flare up issues between communities are in our country to uh, communicate with each other and so on and so forth so like i said there has been multiple tv shows uh, movies uh, and certain sections of uh, media which do reporting by giving them a communal angle the problem is there is a clear lack of accountability or at least on the part of ott platforms and social media companies uh, when you talk about media there is certain there are certain regulations that the media uh, media conglomerates or media uh, tv channels or news reporting channels might must adhere to but when you look at the same thing from social media perspective and ott platforms whatever the regulations are there are not that effective in the sense that um if anybody is found to be floating those norms if anybody is found to be hosting such content that is communal in nature that might result in um some sort of an law and order issue there are no repercussions right now right there is a clear case of lack of accountability the problem is social media companies uh, we have seen recently how social media companies have been responding to the courts not only the courts the government itself the best case example is twitter the government of india brought in the information technology intermediary guidelines and uh, digital media ethics code rules of 2021 and we saw how difficult it was for the government of india to get and uh, grievance redressal officer appointed by twitter who happens who according to those guidelines should be an indian but we saw how that thing played out even in the case of courts they have been pretty reluctant to attend uh, pretty le- reluctant to uh, adhere to guidelines given by the courts also mind you these guidelines were not brought in by the government of india these guidelines were brought in by the government of india upon the order by a court the court said the guidelines you are saying are not effective please bring in more stringent guidelines so that is how these it rules came into play so let us say twitter facebook even youtube to a greater extent you saw you see content that is being posted on these social media platforms uh, youtube is at the end of the day is a social media platform it's a video content platform but nonetheless it is a, it can be termed as a social media platform you see a lot of content that is either derogatory or outright hurtful at some sections of our society again lack of accountability what can the government do what can the companies themselves do but you see these companies floating those norms let us take the example of twitter see forget let us keep aside the communal angle or the communal content on one side one of the biggest accusations that uh, twitter faces particularly in our country and not only in our country in other parts of the world is the hosting of adult content particularly pedophilia underage uh, pornographic content which is a huge problem which is a crime in our country which is an offense punishable offense in our country but you still find multiple instances of those content being posted shared and hosted on twitter social media platform 
there seems to be little that twitter is doing in our country to address this issue despite knowing that it is a crime offense in our country so again the at the end of the day the buck stops at the company it has to adhere to the law of the land but where is the accountability there is no accountability right even the chief justice went down to the point stating that they only respond to the power of people see i cannot comment on that uh, neither can you comment on that that is uh, the wishful or uh, the esteems of the observations of our chief justice of our country now the point that we have to concentrate here is their inability to answer to institutions of india right these companies are private companies at the end of the day they are answerable to the laws of the land who are the implement who are interested with the job of implementing the laws of our land are institutions and you see these companies not adhering to those laws and not answering to the questions posed by our institutions let us take again the case of twitter facebook and youtube when our parliamentary committee is requisitioned that their heads of the companies be present in uh, parliament for questioning none of those representatives showed up right india is a democratic country we have a huge parliament we have the mandate of the people being given on a regular basis without any hindrances there are uh, see when a democratically elected government which is bipartisan at the end of the day parliament is countries are bipartisan you have both the opposition and the government in power sitting together and when those com- parliamentary committees asks the head of a company to be present to be in their presence so that they can question him over certain policy decisions of his own company in regards to india and its population they simply did not show up now that is what the chief justice of india is pointing out to these companies not only they are giving space for these kind of communal content to be hosted on their platform to be shared on their platform to be viewed on their platform they are also pretty much careless about how they respond to the institutions of our country so this is a two aspect thing one you have on one side of uh, this article you have on one side news channels that is right media sections of media on the other half you have social media companies so it is a two pronged problem that cannot be addressed with a single stroke it has to be done at a accountability level it has to be done from that perspective the digital media guidelines right the it rules kind of address certain issues but they again do not answer the complete problem so that is what the chief justice of india is alluding to here right there is no accountability they never respond the institutions that are interested with the job of overseeing these companies they never respond to those institutions right they do not uh, that is what this article alludes to right these companies are acting on their own with impunity as there is no accountability to be held now moving on to the next article afghan origin terror prime concern india so this is in a long list of articles that we have been considering and studying for a long period of time since the afghan situation became very fluid with the withdrawal of american troops we discussed in length how impactful that decision from the american side has been on india particularly not only on the region and of all you have to consider the population of afghanistan also right whatever the effect that india is going to have is whatever it is and we have been prepared for it and we expected it to happen at one point or the other but these uh, the civilian population of afghanistan right has to live with this kind of a thing for a day day to day basis for 20 years there was a hope that the society would see some sort of a progress where women rights are restored individual rights are restored uh, people can choose how th- to live their life now everything has gone back to 1990s 
देर इज अ क्लियर डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन वॉट तालिबान सीज एंड वॉट तालिबान डस एज ए सेट यू कैनॉट टेक एनी थिंग ऑन फेस वैल्यू बिकॉज द ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड ऑफ तालिबान हैज नॉट बीन एग्जाम्पलरी so we discussed at length how impactful it has been how it led to the growth of other terror organizations like uh, I- isi koshan uh, province isi sahel region that is the west african branch of al qaeda that that later turned into islamic state what has been the human cost on american soldiers american veterans what what has been the cost on the civilian population of afghanistan right hundreds and thousands of people have been killed in various suicide attacks various attacks on afghan civilian population so i think it is well pretty well established what was the out, outcome of the 20 two decade war in afghanistan now this article afghan origin terror prime concern for india so when our ambassador in qatar met the political head of afghanistan in doha what was the prime objective that we expressed to the taliban uh, political leadership of taliban is that you shouldn't allow your territory to be atta- used to originate terror attacks in india right let me frame it in a proper way you shouldn't allow any terror organizations in the world to use your territory to plan and carry out attacks on indian soil then 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 came the request for evacuation of religious minorities and if and any afghan wishes to travel to india they shouldn't impede right these were the requests but as we discussed in earlier classes there is a clear distinction between engaging with self interest and engaging with trust for uh, is the trust between india and taliban the answer is no is there a reality where we have no other option but to engage with taliban to preserve our own interests and pro- uh, preserve our own internal security yes that is that is what we are seeing here it shouldn't be interpreted in any other way right it is the real uh, politics that is taking place in afghanistan where we are also molding or changing our strategy to address the realities on the ground now the primary and immediate concern for indian government is terror threat emanating from afghanistan so let me give you an example of what kind of threats we are talking about so when the american troops left they left some equipment back of the list of equipment that you might have read on the internet that might have been shared with you one of the things that the american troops have left behind is night vision goggles the problem is once these night vision goggles which are american made right find their way into the hands of terrorists operating in jammu and kashmir the advantage that indian security forces have over those said terrorists during night operations is gone it's a matter of how it's just a matter of when 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 would these come into india so that is one reality that is one area of threat that india expected right but did not expect but has to contend with now when our security forces carry out operations during night our special forces are equipped with night vision and the sad truth is those terrorists who were work who are carrying out terror activities in jammu and kashmir and in any part of country in future will also have night vision goggles uh, provided by our neighbor that they got it from afghanistan so the the upper hand that indian security forces had over these terrorists is little bit gone but from what i understand our security forces are also prepared for that kind of an eventuality but that to give you an example it is not important for example point of view 
but that is one example where we'll face challenges these are the challenges that we are talking about this is the primary and immediate concern of india is not only recruits coming in from afghanistan into jammu and kashmir and other parts of india but also the equipment that try to bring in so these are the factors that india is worried about as far as india would confirm whether uh, taliban would be considered still considered as terrorist group or not the answer is undecided remember india sits on the 1988 uh, taliban sanctions committee india uh, the committee is headed by india one of the biggest uh, requests from taliban side is to remove haqqani network from designated terror groups right how is haqqani network or haqqani group is related to india they finance terror organ uh, terror activities in india they finance terrorist uh, training camps in other parts of the world particularly our neighbor and afghanistan the deputy leader of taliban that is uh, sirajuddin haqqani is known and to be believed to be responsible for a number of attacks on indian entities both embassies and consulates where few of our indian embassy staff were killed recently in 2020 there was an uh, suicide attack in gurudwara in uh, that part of the world where 20 people lost their lives he was uh, linked to those uh, terror attacks now haqqani network is also believed to be collaborating with the islamic state of koshan province which was responsible for the deadly attack on kabul airport where 200 people lost their lives including 13 american soldiers 200 close to 200 uh, afghan citizens were killed in that attack so this is where the conflict and comes into play and one side we are trying to engage with taliban to address the growing realities ground realities on the other hand you have a strong case for entities associated with taliban carrying out anti india activities that undermine india's security that undermine india's interests in the region and domestically so the question again is what kind of engagement does india wants with taliban again this is very much still the initial phase as we discussed earlier the unsc resolution might and should be the foundation for our future engagement with taliban if that is the case the primary focus is getting concrete assurances from taliban that they wouldn't allow their territory to be used as a proxy to carry out attacks on our country mind you things are different right now pakistan cannot cannot afford a terror attack on india at least uh, terror attacks like the 2611 or any other terror, uh, attack bomb, uh, bomb blast that are linked to the pakistani state they might use regional countries like afghanistan like nepal like maldives bangladesh to carry out attacks instead of their country that is a real threat and that is a evolving threat so that is the relationship that india would try to have with taliban it would be a interest based relation now on the flip side let us explore a bit about taliban's relation with pakistan uh taliban seems to have found an uh, foreign minister uh, foreign minister in the form of uh, mohammad qureshi of pakistani foreign ministry he has been very vocal of their support and so on and so forth but the ground reality is there is this thing called durand line right so the durand line essentially what it does is it divides the pashtun population of pakistan and afghanistan into two parts the sentiment is that the pashtuns should be an united front that is where you see the ttp uh, emerging the offshoot of taliban that is carrying out attacks on cpec and pakistani security agencies for the last one year or so on various points of time whenever the name pakistan came up the taliban representatives have un- equally said that 
the durand line is something that we have to see that ends in a positive way for afghanistan so what does it mean it will end in the opposite way for pakistan so that durand line is going to be a constant worry for both pakistan and uh, for pakistan from the perspective of taliban in afghanistan the second thing is the outreach that afghanistan is uh, the taliban is doing to other world powers the moment they get that wider rec- recognition that they are striving for they no longer would need the help of pakistan right one of the biggest help that pakistan has been uh, see pa- whenever you see this uh, taliban leadership traveling out of afghanistan to other countries they tend to travel on pakistani passports so that is the kind of relationship that they share so that is a point of worry for them too again anything related to taliban that says in public in regards to india has to be taken at face value until a certain time is passed and then government is formed whether we have to see whether it is an inclusive one or not based on that our engagement will depend on and that is how future things will play out but for us as far as the indian government is concerned the primary and immediate concern is terrorist threat emanating from afghan soil under taliban led regime targeting india moving on to the next article north korea rejects chinese vaccine unicef it seems that north korea has rejected around 3 million doses of chinese covid-19 vaccine uh, named sinovac uh, which was donated to north korea through the un led vaccine initiative covax initiative that is covid-19 global vaccine access or vaccine global access covax they denied these vaccines by saying that these vaccines should be given to countries that are in greater need so we don't know what kind of covid pandemic is going inside north korea it is very hard to gauge with little to no information coming out but experts do su- uh, suspect that uh, there is there are cases of covid-19 in the country see remember north korea was the first country that imposed uh, stricter lockdowns compared to any other country in the world right in january itself in january last year itself they locked down their country they didn't allow anybody to come in see they generally don't allow anybody to come in but there was this tourism kind of a thing that happens where scholars and others do visit that particularly from china so chinese tourism is big in north korea but even they were, they were the first country to impose strict lockdown to prevent uh, the virus spreading from their neighbor china they get a lot of influx from china and they didn't want that to happen so they locked their borders as far as that uh, the number of cases is concerned it is very hard to gauge because as i said little to no information comes into public or at least analysts have diff- a difficult time getting information now it seems that they have communicated that they don't need the, those vaccines which are being given to them by the covax initiative now they wanted those vaccines to be given to other countries which were limited uh, by supply and surge in some cases right you have certain countries uh, struggling with case loads they wanted to be given that the reason i am including is it's no very related to exam but i found very interesting that pyongyang the capital city of north korea would communicate with covax to receive covid-19 vaccines in coming months so i found this bit of news little bit interesting from all the news that we have been hearing for the last few day, a few months or so so moving on to the next article this is in regards to the unsc resolution 2593 so as i said in the earlier article we discussed much of it in earlier classes we discussed at length who sponsored it who opposed it or what was the reason behind these countries opposing it now let us talk about one thing right it talks about right what does the unsc resolution talks about it essentially talks about that you, it shouldn't be used we all discuss that but it's also it also talked about or talks about the importance of upholding individual rights right to push for an inclusive 
negotiated a political settlement for government right and also the presence of un designated entities in afghanistan the rest we discussed in length in earlier classes now one of the criticisms that one found with that resolution was the watered down language used in the resolution right sim this is very initial stages you cannot simply say that we are going to impose sanctions on afghanistan because there is an there are any commitments from taliban uh, the, right taliban government for uh, the un charters uh, chapter 7 mandate to be invoked right the, which empowers the unsc to maintain peace there are not any actions from the taliban side or commitments that they broke from their side to impose such sanctions see this resolution came at a point in time where india was heading the unsc now what one hoped was the language would be very harsh in the sense that it would ask for more from taliban than what it actually did in the final resolution one of the possible answers could be that the countries of russia and china were opposed to the resolution itself because they accused the resolution of being rushed through being very um, non inclusive of their own concerns respective concerns but whatever the difference is they were engaging with india and other stakeholders in the unsc while the drafting of this resolution was taking place but at the end they decided to abstain from voting altogether so the idea was that or at least it seems that the language that the final resolution had may be because of severe opposition from russia and china whom later decided to abstain so again the language was not what one would have hoped for but nonetheless the resolution does indeed set the tone for how future engagement will take place with taliban now as i said the 1988 uh, taliban sanctions committee with uh, which india chaired is uh, destined to meet uh, soon and we need to ensure that what is the outcome, what should be the priority for us during that meeting we need to ensure that no designated leader of taliban meaning terrorist designated or sanction designated leader of taliban or any of their associates be given access to funds access to arms access to travel until and unless they make certain concessions and commitments and show that they can work on that commitments and get those commitments executed in practice which are in line with international principles then only any kind of leeway should be given to taliban leadership otherwise the case would be as same as with that of the american deal with taliban so this is uh, the editorial for today thank you stay safe namaste bothakur is academy prastuti aru adhyanor nirbhor jogyo thikona Academy.